Hey, it's Danny from Conscious Calisthenics. So I wanted to give you a warning as to why you should not eat cheese on a carnivore diet. And when I'm making this statement, this does not actually apply to everyone, but if you're someone that wants to find out if it's not a good idea for you to be eating cheese on a carnivore diet, because it could be stopping you from getting the full healing benefits from it and feeling as good as you possibly could on a carnivore diet. And in this video, I'm gonna go into all the different reasons as to why cheese may be a bad idea for you. So if you're someone that wants to learn all about this, make sure you watch this video from start to finish. So first off, there is a variety of different cheeses out there, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of them. And there are a lot of different cheeses, such as Grano, Padano, Parmesano, Regano, Tommy Di Savo, and many other cheeses out there that are aged for around a six month period, and also fermented. And guess what? The longer a cheese is fermented for, and the more it is aged, the more histamines that cheese will naturally produce from the bacteria contained within it. And there is a lot of people that get on a carnivore diet due to having histamine issues, especially people that have been on a vegan diet for a long time because the foods on that diet, the majority of them are very high in histamines. The longer that you eat them, the more that you eat them, the more the histamines are gonna build up within your body. And then you'll start to get all types of reactions from histamines. You could get rectal itching, bloating or gas, itchy eyes, itchy skin, skin issues, gut inflammation, depression, so many other different things can be induced in you from this plant toxin that is a defense mechanism for a plant to stop you eating it fully, which is a really, really good thing for the plant at least, but not good for you if you're eating these very high histamine foods on a regular basis. So if you're someone that has issues with histamines, then you want to be avoiding all aged and fermented cheeses. You may find that you can get on with cheeses that have not undergone all these different things that I just mentioned. And different cheeses that may be more suitable for you would be things like soft cottage cheese and mozzarella cheese. A lot of people find that they can get on with these but not with the other ones I've mentioned that can be high in histamines. So do your research up online, find out which ones are high in histamines, which ones are low, experiment. Because you still might even find, even with the ones that are fermented or aged and don't contain a lot of histamines, could still cause you a lot of different issues for a whole host of different reasons that I'll explain in this video. So the next thing, as I mentioned, fermentation. So there are cheeses such as a mental Swiss cheese that is not fermented nowhere near as long as six months such as the Tommy Di Savo cheese and other cheeses that I mentioned earlier on. And the specific type of bacteria that is used with these types of cheeses can actually be histamine producing bacteria, or they may get your body to start naturally increasing the production of histamines. And I'm not gonna name them all off because I can't actually pronounce them all. I list a lot of them here and I put a link down below for a website that talks about all the different strains of bacteria that come under the different things that I've mentioned that cause these issues for people that have problems with histamines in general. So let's say you get a cheese that is not fermented and not aged. It doesn't have the specific types of bacteria that get your body to naturally increase histamine production in the body or they naturally have histamines contained within them. Yes, you still might find that you get issues with cheese. So the first reason could be that you're getting pasteurized cheese. When a cheese goes through pasteurization, it is heated to around 180 degrees. So guess what happens when that happens? It kills off all of the different enzymes and nutrients and various other things that you need within it for your body to be breaking down the cheese as effectively and efficiently as possible and for it to be as nutrient rich and have many other different compounds that are naturally found within cheese and milk before it is pasteurized. As shown here in this chart, it deactivates so many and kills off so many different 
things when you pasteurize milk. So it's not good in any way, shape or form, pasteurized cheese. It is dead and just completely toxic and foreign to the body. It doesn't recognize it at all as a good thing. It just sees it as a viral invader and then it has an immune response on your body and can cause inflammation and a whole host of other issues. And then there is the thing with a lot of people do not get on with A1 beta casein, which is a protein that is found naturally occurring in the majority of milk and dairy products out there. And a lot of people do not get on with this. Their body doesn't process it so well and it causes a whole host of issues for them. I'm not one of those people, but there are a lot of people that do not get on with this. So if you're someone that is buying cheese and you're not getting on with it, it may be that you have issues with A1 beta casein. So you may need to get some cheese that is made from some milk that naturally contains A2 beta casein, which you can find companies out there that sell this. It is harder to normally source it, it normally costs more, but you may find that you get on with that a lot better. And something to be aware of, if you're someone that needs A2 beta casein dairy products, for example, goat milk and also sheep's milk, and then if obviously you make the cheese from it, their milk is completely full of just A2 beta casein and no A1 beta casein. So this is why a lot of people can get on with dairy products that come from these animals. So you're someone that may be having issues with A1 beta casein, you could try out sheep or goats cheese and see if you get on with that. So say that you're trying out all these different things and it's still not working for you because it may not. There may be a few different reasons as to why. You may just be someone where your gut health and your gut microbiome and your health holistically is just so messed up that it can just not tolerate cheese at all. So it's about listening to your body. So if you follow all the different things that I've mentioned and you do a little experiment with yourself and you're not feeling good from any of those types of cheeses that I've mentioned and you're avoiding ones with histamine producing bacteria and avoiding aged cheeses and fermented cheese and so on, then you may be just at a point on your own healing journey where it's just not suitable for you. So just listen to your body. If you feel good from it, then continue in it. If you don't, then don't. And what I found from my own personal experience, there are times where I felt that I've wanted to eat a lot of cheese naturally and there's other times where my body's like, nope, I just don't need any more of that as well. So be aware that it can chop and change at different points. We are not static, we are dynamic, and we are forever changing. And another thing is, once you start to experiment with cheese, there's a lot of people that tend to go from nothing to everything. So they go all in. And what I mean by that is, someone might not have had cheese for a long time, especially someone that's been a vegan for a long time and then may have switched to a carnivore diet, and then they start eating loads and loads and loads of cheese straight away because it tastes really good and they feel drawn to eat quite a lot of it. And this can be a very, very dangerous thing to do because your body's not been used to eating that type of food for a long time. And then bombarding the system can just overwhelm it and just have a very negative effect on you. Remember, when you start to eat new different foods that you haven't for a long time, your bacteria within your digestive system will start to change over a short period of time. So you need to go through that natural process that your body's gonna go through when reintroducing that food or any other food within your diet that you've not had for a long time. So if you're someone that's going completely overboard, that's what could be making you not feel good. And I have helped people before and given them advice on a carnival diet. And then they're eating loads and loads of cheese or consuming loads of milk and they don't feel good. And it's like, whoa, 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 I told you to go slow and steady. It's not a sprint at all. It's a marathon run. Just go slow and steady. Slow and steady wins the race. It's like the story of the turtle and the hare. The turtle always outruns the hare. And last but not least, this happens to a lot of cheeses that are produced and sold in the stores. A lot of them are gonna end up having a lot of refined salt within it, which when salt goes through a refining process, they add a lot of different things that are very toxic to your body, which you really don't want in it. And then they've stripped all the beneficial nutrients out of it. And it's just a concentrated form of sodium that's just not good for you in 
any way, shape or form. So this is something that could be making you not feel good from cheeses. If you do your research and you normally find raw cheeses, a lot of time they will use unrefined sea salt within it. So yeah, this is just something to just be aware of and yeah, see if this is messing you up with the cheese. Because you may find from your own experience that when certain ones are full of a lot of refined salt, they don't make you feel good and then ones without any salt or they've got unrefined sea salt in, you feel good. So that's it from me in this video. Got any comments or questions? Leave them down below. I'd also like your feedback. Do you prefer this setting better than the standard horrible black background? Let me know down below. And yeah, don't forget to like, share and subscribe make sure you do click that subscribe button without delay don't hesitate come on you know you want to make sure you click the bell button as well otherwise youtube will not notify you of when those videos are uploaded thank you for clicking that thank you thank you thank you and yeah as always enjoy the rest of your day make the most of it and catch you on the flip side peace